welcome to your program, Visited Do. Uh, Visited Do, as you know, uh, is a program that promotes culture and tourism. Uh, today we are at Igun Street, a popular Igun Street, an historical Igun Street uh, here in Benin City. And uh, we are with a great chief, a man that has really proven in uh, all ramification that he, he has contributed a lot to the growth of the society. Uh, sir, can we meet you, sir? Yes, I am Chief Kingsley Osai Ine, the Ine of Igun, and the head of Oka, uh, the Zamani Bia, the Aka of Zamani Bia of Benin. Um, I am the head of this community. And this community is known as Igun Street, the, the community for bronze, bronze making. We have uh, been privileged to produce a lot of bronzes that have been all around the world that uh, people come to see that are in various museums around the world. So that is what we are known for as bronze casters of the kingdom of Benin. Basically, the guild was formed to, to beautify the palace and take history of all that has uh, taken place in the kingdom. And that's why, because then we didn't have any means of uh, documentation. So we had to document these in forms of various artworks, flags and all the rest to depict every activities that uh, has taken place in the kingdom. So we have that as uh, the record of the history of this kingdom. So we are known as bronze casters of the name. That's what we are known for. Okay. So uh, can you tell us a brief history of how bronze casting started in this kingdom? Okay, it predates back as long as this kingdom, the casting of bronze. And um, we are going through the process known as the lost wax process. We model in wax, we use it to, to build cores, we cover up and we cast in brass. So the process we use is known as the lost wax process because when we are preheating before the casting, the wax is lost, thereby creating a vacuum inside whatever uh, we have modeled or whatever uh, piece we are going to produce. And when we now pour in this brass, molten brass, it now takes the shape of the form of whatever we have modeled out. And that's how we come about the bronze before the cleaning for the market. So we got our royal shutter in 1280 AD by Ogwala. And ever since then, we, we've been working things out on commercial basis to be able to fend for the members of the guild. So we now produce commercially to sell out. If not before now, we are basically working for the for the palace. Okay. All what we do is basically under the instruction of the monarch. We don't do anything contrary to that. But after we got the shutter, we are allowed to at least sell some out and commercialize to make to be able to fend for ourselves. And that's how it has been till till date. Okay, so uh, this this time now, what do you think uh, is needed to add to the growth of Igo? Yes, um, from the beginning, we have always been working tediously by way of physical, you know, approach to our, our jobs, you know, and it has been telling on our, our children or the ones who are coming up because. <clears throat> We have uh, bronze casters that are of various age. There are some are below 20, while some are above 60. You know, so they see this work as becoming too tedious for them. So it's even making them go out to look for greener pastures. So we are scared of not wanting this uh, this work to go into extinction. So we've been conversing in various forms to see that we are able to, to, to build up things with the guilds for the growth of the community so that people will now get, feel interested to be able to continue with this job. So we are actually soliciting for 
modern equipment to be able to produce these works, not the way we have been doing it before, thereby committing ourselves physically. And it's a very tedious uh, process, the casting and the filing and all. And it constitutes some problems to the health too. So if we are, are able to you know, reduce all this to an extent, I think the interest will develop more and people will begin to pick up interest. They, outside the country, artists, there are a lot of them who are graduates, there are a lot of them who, who go and come back to the same work they are, they are known for. So we don't see anything wrong in having our people, whether you are abroad or whatever, to come back to the kingdom and begin to, to, to develop more on the works. But when you are abroad, you see you are able to, you are privileged to, to, to be where they, they produce some of these works and you see automated machines are used. So you see the processes they, they, they use. We are not talking of using that in the made traditional uh, works, but at least we, are, we have contemporary works we do. And um, those contemporary works we sell to be able to meet up you know, with our own uh, problems at home. So if we have these equipment, they are the ones, the cleaning equipment, the foundry, and other uh, 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 equipment to use. There is a uh, uh, centrifugal casting machine. There is a torrential uh, uh, production machine where we can produce 2,000 pieces in less than three hours. And that will help for the growth. We have a lot of souvenirs to produce that will bring in money like of old they used to have cutleries that are made of brass and well finished they have other souvenirs like lockets and all the rest which they can be producing here and it can only be done smoothly through these automated machines that are programmed to to produce these uh, works so those are things that can boost the 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 morals of the people doing these jobs but with the physical involvement, it's difficult because a lot of them are beginning to shy away from it because they are not seeing the benefits that are attached to, to it. So that's what we are praying for, to be able to, to push all these uh, uh, obstacles aside so that we will not be proud of what we have always had. Uh, great chief and uh, the Ibne of Igun, uh, he has really made mention of uh, their challenges that they are having uh, uh, producing the bronze work and others. Made mention of the automated machine, and, uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, don't you think uh, you can approach the government for this? And the government can provide that and uh, see how it can eat some revenue. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, we are, so what are, what are the efforts? We are, we are, yes, we've been making some efforts. We are doing proposals now to send to the government, you know, and um, our monarch knows our plight and is obviously trying for us too. Because when people come to visit the palace, he sends them here to see how we go about the works and all the rest. And those are... Uh, 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 things to boost our uh, morals, you know. So we are making a lot of proposals. We have even proposed um, uh, sites, 32 sites on a good street for immortalized monuments, okay. like the one I did at uh, Five Junction now. Yes. That's a 30 feet monument. So, so now, I saw, even when that statue has not been availed, I saw the height, the gigantic one. Yes. How really, long does that take you to produce? We did that under three months. Three months? Yes, we did it under three months. Because we were really, because the monarch requested for it, we were really working night and day to be sure that we meet up with the record time. Uh, but um, uh, I'm sure the monarch would have unveiled that long before now, but he wanted a, a conducive environment. So he had to send us back there to be able to provide the environment for tourists where people can sit down, take photographs and come and uh, uh, wish is a, a laudable uh, 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 project, you know. So that's what we are working on for the moment. We are rearranging the environment and if you go there now, you see the difference from the way it was before. We started from the scratch and make sure 
there will be less uh, uh, um, um, issues with uh, maintenance. So we, we had to reduce that maintenance uh, 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 activities to the barest uh, minimum. So that's why we had to cement and create a pattern, different patterns on the floors. You know, we have to put uh, uh, flap flower verses and we have to put chairs where people can sit down and uh, take photographs there. So when, when do you think it's likely going to be unveiled? Uh, that's, that's for the monarch to decide. I, I don't know okay. when. Anytime he calls for the unveiling, we'll be there to unveil okay. so that uh, he can show it to the world. Okay. Uh, that's a 30 feet monument. So we, like I said, we're proposing 32 locations here on Igun where tourists can come in because this community is a tourist center, center yes. where tourists can come in, they will go from one statue to the other, reading the history of that statue. But we are going to come up with various statues, depicting various activities, you know, what happened in the kingdom too. So we propose, we are proposing 32 sites from here to Ted Junction. But Igun uh, is from Sakumba to Ted. So we want to uh, put these monuments on both sides of the street till we get to Ted, so as to attract a lot of uh, tourists yeah. down to the community, and that will help the community and the government. Well, I call it immortalized because we will discuss with a lot of multi uh, multinational companies that will buy the statue, that will pay for the statue and brand it in their names, you know, and they will be responsible for the maintenance of that statue. So all they do is when they pay, the government has theirs. The palace has theirs, and then the community has theirs too, you know. So that is a very good. Uh, oh, it is. It is. It's a very good concept. At least that can. The issue of uh, the lack of uh, maintenance culture will be defeated by by so doing. Uh, sir, uh, now let's come back to. We discovered that the people that is actually doing this work now, they are of age. And uh, you hardly see children of these days are like, trying to. What are the measures to bring the younger ones in? That's what I'm, I've been trying to say. Okay. They are not picking up interest anymore because they, are, they feel their money is not coming out of it. You understand? They, with all the labor attached and they are just not getting uh, uh, something worthy. Yeah. So that's the reason why they are, most of them are shying away from the jobs now. But um, well, the, I'm happy that the Nigerians, the Jews and Nigerians are beginning to pick interest in these artworks now, statues because and now all they, now, so they come in now, people begin to immortalize their families by way of, the jobs are now coming in, but it's equally coming in almost at the wrong time because the cost of materials now is extremely high. Yeah. A kilo of brass we used to buy for 600 naira, now what's 3,000 naira for a kilo. And the wood, we're now getting it. Even the brass now, they pack them to the Chinese companies who export them out, thereby preventing us from having our raw materials to work with. So it's, um, it's you know, I think uh, interesting now that people are beginning to develop interest in this work. And I just pray it grows like that to be able to to entice these children back to to what they are known for. If not, they, they are, their belief is going out there, trying to make money abroad and all the rest, and forgetting where they are coming from. So okay. that's... Okay, sir. So, uh, let's come down to the issue of our language. A dual language is uh, one of the languages they said, they said uh, it's going to go extinct. So what is your own take about that? What do you have to tell the other people? <laughs> Believe you me, I'm scared. I am really, really, really scared because the way things are going now, if we don't handle this on time, we'll, we'll, we are turning this kingdom into a secular kingdom where everybody can claim what is not theirs. Because when you, if it's a society where we follow the norms of tradition. Things, nobody will be scared and we, we will continue to grow. But now you, you, you talk to an Edo person, a Benin person for that matter, and he will be replying you in English. Yeah. 
you understand the children now they don't even understand the language anymore because their parents are not speaking it to them at home you know and they are growing up with this if they are even telling you that uh, i know i'm benin but i would not i don't want to say that i'm from benin because they are shy you understand it does not happen like this in the east it does not happen in the north it does not happen in the west they are very 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 proud of their languages in these regions i've mentioned i don't know what our problem is i don't know and all of them that are migrating to to europe and whatever they are not helping issues at all you bring these children back home let them learn and know where they are from a lot of them they are lost they don't even know where they come from god forbid anything happen to the parents they don't even know how to trace home they don't know and secondly we are not practicing this thing in schools and that is supposed to be one of the basic thing that will help to curtail this uh, 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 menace of throwing this language away you know so i will advise that we the parents should be advising our children teach them the language you should be proud of where you are from we should we should be very very because it's just that maybe they don't know how great this kingdom is that's why anybody who shies away from being a benin is is i mean i don't know whether to use a, a, what kind of word to use for them you know it's a very wonderful unique and great kingdom all over the world and yet we are not proud of it why i don't know well, uh, we are, the white people we are copying their culture they are not copying us they are not coming here to copy our own culture i don't know why we have to follow them it's not a bad thing to know how life is out there but you cannot throw away what you are you, you grow with you must have it with you and join that attach that to it and you grow further that's, it. that's just the truth i'm really really scared well uh you you're hearing him. Uh, he, the way he's really pa uh, passionate about what he's saying is a painful thing to really see that uh, it's really like this. Though no, we are doing everything possible to ensure that uh, we protect a dual language not to go extinct. And uh, it's not just a one man uh, uh, walk. It, let's take it as a point of duty to ensure that parents. We, we speak a do language to our children, let them know about a do, get a do books. If we put this whole effort, we'll be able to save this language that they are claimed that is gradually going extinct. And by the grace of a nikau, we, it will not happen. A do is yagmo. So, sir, eh, ewa magile ze woma we, even the maguye bo we program in our way. Uh, so uh, because you are to no ya because I am I we have a lot of adults that does not even know anything about their culture or whatever we have i've seen a lot of them and some of them comes to visit it. that is why we always say if you are a visitor in Benin or you are on vacation you have a guest always take them out bring them to a place like uh, visited uh, you have a lot of other sites that you can uh, that will refresh you about your culture so erima the time you know the Madu ya work one. Maybe we can like that. Maybe new topic you run. I make one. I have a new video. You make one. Anytime. So, I make one. I ask this to her. Now, we will not answer. 
Wesley, sir. Anytime. Wesley. Wesley. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. So, it has been your program visited, though. Uh, we are using this medium to thank every uh, of our followers. Uh, it's your program is your lovable program. You have stick to us. You have been our followers. And don't forget to share our content. And uh, just press the subscription button. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook too. I want to sign off in this one. My name remains Owa Kings. Imadi, thanks for watching.